Good day everyone! Welcome to my YouTube channel. For today's lesson is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. But before moving on to this video, please don't forget to click the subscribe button. Okay, so in this lesson, we will be answering the following question about Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. In which the first one is that what is cognitive behavioral therapy next is how cognitive behavioral therapy works how the cbt has been formulated fourth what are the cbt techniques fifth what cbt can help with sixth what are the benefits of cbt seven how effective cbt is eight what are the things to consider and potential challenges in CBT? So let us now answer what is cognitive behavioral therapy. By the way, this kind of therapy, the proponent is Aaron Beck. I got four definitions of CBT from different websites. And in this website, CBT is defined as a talking therapy that can help manage problems by changing the way individuals think and behave. For the other side, it, it says that CBT is a type of psychotherapeutic treatment that helps people learn how to identify and change destructive or disturbing thought patterns that have a negative influence on behavior and emotions. The third one is that CBT focuses on changing the automatic negative thoughts that can contribute to and worsen emotional difficulties, depression, and anxiety. This is spontaneous negative thoughts have a detrimental influence on mood. The third one is CBT is a form of psychological treatment that has been demonstrated to be effective for a range of problems including depression, anxiety disorders, alcoholism, and drug use problems, marital problems, eating disorders, and severe mental illness. So if you are, if you are going to get the focus of the four definitions they are saying that in cbt we are getting the thinking pattern of the individual why why we are identifying the thinking pattern or the negative thoughts of the individual because cbt is believing that these thoughts can affect can influence our mood our emotion and also our behavior and so the goal of cbt is to turn that is to change the negative thoughts the negative thinking pattern into positive one in order for us to have a good mood a good emotion and also for, for us to show good behavior just like you can see in the diagram, this one is clearly saying us, clearly tells us that our thoughts no, affect, can greatly influence our mood and also our behavior. So the in, in CBT, the first thing that the CBT do is to to identify the thoughts to identify the thinking pattern and so if the thinking pattern is negative the goal is to turn that into positive so that the individual you no know, can behave very well so that the individual can have a positive mood and if that individual has a positive mood or emotion then positive behavior could radiate with that individual so that is about
empty. Another is that not to make CBT very clear for us. It says in the diagram that what we think affects how we feel and act. What we feel affects how we think and act. What we do affects how we feel and how we think. What we do affects how we think and feel. And so, what we think is what we do. That is the thought. That is the idea of cognitive behavioral therapy. When searching this cognitive behavioral therapy, I asked myself, why did they call it CBT? Why did they call it cognitive? It's because in here, the first thing that the, that the therapists do is to look at the thinking pattern, is to look at the thoughts of the individual. Because just like what I've said a while, a while ago, that thoughts, that thinking pattern radiate in our emotion and also in our behavior. Example, broken promises. It is very natural for us people that if our heart is broken, we say that we fail. We say that we are a failure. We say that we are worthless and we don't deserve another meaningful relationship. And later on, because of, the, of this thing, we feel so hopeless. We feel so lonely, depressed, and tired. And we stop going out and meeting new people. We become trapped in the negative cycle, sitting down at home alone and feeling bad about ourselves. And what does the CBT do in this negative thinking? Turn into positive one. That someday, that individual who experienced brokenness, who is brokenhearted, can accept that many marriage end. And so, if that individual accept that there are a lot of marriage end, that's the beginning of moving on. That's the beginning that he or she accept his or her mistakes and feel positive, optimistic about the future. But then it takes time. Let us remember that it's, it takes time to heal a broken heart. So in a, as a summary, CBT aims to stop negative cycles by breaking down things that make you feel bad, anxious, or scared. By making your problems more manageable, CBT can help you change your negative thought patterns and improve the way you feel. CBT places an emphasis on helping individuals learn to be their own therapists. Through exercises in the session, as well as homework, exercises outside of sessions, Patients are helped to develop coping skills. Yes, they must develop coping skills because not all time therapists are there for them. Therefore, they need to know, they need to develop the coping skills in order for them to deal with problematic emotions in order for them to face challenges or problematic emotions that come in their life. That's one of the goals of CBT, for them to have the coping skills, for the patient to develop the coping skills, for them to face, to deal with problematic emotions. 
CBT therapists emphasize what is going on in the person's current life rather than what has led up to their difficulties. So this CBT is present-oriented, is focusing on your present, not on your past. A certain amount of information about one's history is needed, but the focus is primarily on moving forward in time to develop more effective ways of coping with life. Second question, how does CBT work? CBT can help you make sense of overwhelming of overwhelming problems by breaking them down into five areas and those five areas is called i call those five main areas as sit and end the pattern s stands for situations t for thoughts e for emotions p for physical feelings a for actions CBT is based on the concept of these five areas being interconnected and affecting each other. So what are those main areas for you to memorize it easily? Just think of this. Sit and end the pattern. Because one of the goals of CBT is to end your thinking pattern, is to end your negative thoughts. Third question, how does CBT has been formulated? This, have, this has been formulated with a lot of researches and clinical practices. Okay, what is the fourth question? CBT techniques. What are the CBT techniques? It is about more than identifying thought patterns. It, it is focused on using a wide range of the strategies to help people overcome these thoughts. Techniques may include journaling, role-playing, relaxation, facing one's fears, and mental distractions. But then, let me remind you that in CBT technique, the first thing to do is to identify the negative thoughts. Why identify? Why first identify the negative thoughts? Because again, this greatly influences our emotion, our behavior. After identifying the negative thoughts, then the second one is to set the goal. But let me remind you in setting a goal. When you set a goal, please think of the acronym SMART. S stands for specific, M for measurable, A for attainable, R for relevant, T for time-based. Make sure that when you set the goal, the, that goal is, is specific, measurable, attainable relevant to the case to the patient's case and it's really time based after setting the goal then it's time for you to practice the new skills and make sure let me again remind you that when you give new skill to the patient make sure that this skill can be used by the patient in real world situations i'll give you example a person with a substance use disorder might start practicing new coping skills and rehearsing ways to avoid or deal with social situations that could potentially trigger a relapse Another example is that suppose the individual, your patient or your client is addicted to marijuana or to cocaine or something, medicine or drugs that, that really addicted. Then what new skill will you teach to the individual? One skill that you, might, that you may teach is to practice him, practice her, to avoid social situations that trigger his problem. One 
is that problem solving. Okay? So, learning problem solving skills can help you identify and solve problems that arise from life stressors, both big and small. And reduce the negative impact of psychological and physical illness. The question in here is that how are we going to solve the problem? First is to, of course, identify the problem. Second is to generate a list of possible solutions. Third is to evaluate the strengths and weaknesses of each possible solution. Fourth, choose a solution to implement and then implement the solution. Prob uh, solving real life problem is just like solving math problems. When we are solving math problems during our math subjects, of course, what is the first thing for us to do is that to identify the problem. Then, after identifying the X or what is unknown to the problem, then we generate. We think of the possible solutions. We get what are the given numbers. We get some clues in order for us to find X. Of course, it's really hard to find X. But sometimes, it's really good for us to find X. After generating, you know, looking for the possible solutions, then you're going to evaluate you know, what would be the best solution for me to do. Is it this or this? Then after choosing, that's the time for you to implement the solution. That's how we solve, ladies and gentlemen, the, prob the, the problem. Then after solving the problem, then we should do self-monitoring. Self-monitoring is also known as diary work. Self-monitoring is an important part of CVT. Why? Because that involves tracking behaviors, symptoms, or experiences over time and sharing with and sharing them with therapists. Yes, it is. And you know what? Self-monitoring is very important to all of us, even to normal people, even to those, no? To those who are not sick or who don't have any case, any psychological problem. This is for all, self-monitoring. Self-monitoring is good to each individual. Why? Because it reminds us on how we work in a day, on how we positively or negatively influence others in a day. That's how self-monitoring works. It makes us very mindful of our day. It helps us very mindful on how did we work in a day. Next, self-monitoring can help provide your therapist with the information needed to provide the best treatment. Example, for people coping with eating disorders, self-monitoring may involve keeping track of eating habits as well as any thoughts or feelings that went along with consuming that meal or snack. Fifth question, what CVT can help with? CVT can help addiction, anger issues, anxiety, bipolar disorder, depression, eating disorders, panic attacks, personality disorders, focus, chronic pain or serious illnesses, divorce or breakups. Grief or loss, insomnia, low self-esteem, relationship problems, stress management. 
And what are the benefits of cognitive behavioral therapy? Based on researches, it allows individuals to engage in healthier thinking patterns by becoming aware of the negative and often unrealistic thoughts that dampen their feelings and moods. It is an effective short-term treatment option. For example, improvements can be seen in 5 to 20 sessions. It has been found effective for a wide variety of maladaptive behaviors. It is often more affordable than some other types of therapy. It has been found to be effective online as well as face-to-face. -face. It can be used for those who don't require psychotropic medication. It helps clients develop coping skills. I think this is the best thing for me. It helps clients develop coping skills that can be useful both now and in the future. How effective CBT is? CBT is one of the most well-studied forms of treatment and has been shown to be effective in the treatment of a range of mental conditions including anxiety, depression, eating disorders, insomnia, obsessive compulsive disorder, panic disorder, post-traumatic disorder, stress disorder, and substance use disorder. In 2018, meta-analysis of 41 studies found that CBT helped to improve symptoms in people with anxiety and anxiety-related disorders. CBT has a high level of empirical support for the treatment of, su of substance use disorders, helping improve self-control, avoid triggers, and develop coping mechanisms for daily stressors. Things to consider and potential challenges of CBT, change can be difficult because this is highly individual. We can never say when this individual will be okay in several of our sessions. We are lucky. We are lucky enough if in five sessions, two, three, or five sessions, our patient or our client is already okay. But again, change can be difficult, especially if the client does not accept, does not accept his case or her case, or has no acceptance with what is happening to him or to her change can be difficult is that people must be willing to change yes this is very important in cvt because if people does not or is not willing to change <clears throat> then therapy then changes or change is difficult to happen next progress is often gradual it's not like it's not like when we feel headache and then when we take medicine after an hour or two hours we feel okay already in this case it's really different again we can never tell when our patient our client will be okay so to as a summary of cognitive behavioral therapy this is problem focus it is focus on emotion it is focusing on our thoughts on our behavior it is client-centered collaborative and present centered thoughts that's all ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for watching in my youtube channel